Hello fellow guitar geeks, welcome to Pocket Money Pedals, where I check out gear you should be able to afford without making too much of a dent in your wallet. Today, this, the shark from Sonic Cake, which I honestly thought was going to be a rat, but it isn't. It's some sort of martial hot rodded, uh, distortion, crunchy, vintage to modern sounding pedal for $35, £25 or €30 Euros thereabouts. We're already off to a good start at $35, that's pretty affordable, but how does it sound? Is it built well? Is it noisy? What does it do? Let's find out. Being a micro pedal, we've got small tiny controls for tiny fingers, which I do not have. Over here is the level or master volume of the pedal. Over here is the tone to define how dark or how bright the sound of the pedal is. The big knob in the middle is how much gain we're going to give it, so how much uh, distortion the pedal has. Then at the top we've got a switch, which switches between three different modes. So maybe you've got three pedals in one, we'll find out in this video. We've got normal, we've got modern, and we've got classic. And then over here we've got the foot switch to switch it on, which is a clunky one. Guitar in, pedal out, power in. Simple. I'm using this, the Ibanez GR, GR, and then a lot of numbers. It's about 200 bucks, so it's also a very affordable guitar. I, I picked it because I thought the pedal was a rat, so we need some sort of metally kind of thing. But this does rock quite nicely as well, which I think the pedal is going to be geared more towards. I've got the Fender Deluxe Reverb head running through some vintage 30s, and all the gear that I'm using is going to be listed in the video description. So, let's do the top five tones so you get to hear what the pedal sounds like. Right, I love this pedal. This is not just a great pedal at $35, this is a great pedal, this is so much fun. And I was not expecting to have this much fun with... That's not fair. You know the more money you spend, you tend to think, well you've got to get more value out of this, and therefore more is more, and, and, and more expensive pedals must be better. This pedal is not perfect, it's a bit noisy, there's a little bit of shakiness going on, it's, you know, it's not perfect, but for 35 bucks, I've just had an immense amount of fun making those top five tones. So now I know the pedal kind of inside of that, so I can, I can show you what the knobs do and how they affect the tone, because they are very interactive with each other, meaning that if you adjust the gain, you've got to drop the level, which is kind of normal, but also if you adjust the gain, it compresses and darkens up and then you have to add more tone. So I found that my tone was more in this area than normal. Being a cheaper pedal, the components can, um, can vary, meaning that with more expensive pedals and better built pedals, the components have a lower tolerance for difference. So the builders of those pedals, they actually throw away components because they don't meet their requirements. I'm guessing that cheaper pedals like this, they might have a wider range of margin of error. What that means for us guys playing the guitar is that this tone knob might do different things on mine than it does on yours. So mine might sweep left and right in a wide range and yours might sweep ever so little or the other way around or anything in between those two. And the rest goes for the gain as well. So keep that in mind when you're buying cheaper pedals. That doesn't mean it's bad, it just means that each one you get can be different to the next one. 
I guess the biggest question on my mind was what are the differences between the three modes? So I'm going to play something on all three modes and not talk at all in between those three samples so you can hear it. <laughs> Okay, um, there is a difference. I, I read a review on Amazon that there's no difference between the modes. That person was wrong. That person probably wasn't subscribed to this channel, which you should go and do right now. And that person also probably wasn't using headphones or something like that if they were listening to a video. So I recommend that you are listening to headphones right now or on some amazing, insanely expensive monitor speakers or just something that's not an iPhone or whatever. Yeah, but um, let's try it again. <laughs> That's our benchmark, and then this one, the modern, sounds like a tighter, thicker, warm lower end. And then the classic sounds a little less gain and a little bit more presence. So I would say that is 70s, 80s and normal, and then 90s in the middle, just as a some sort of reference. Okay, let's check out the gain midway, also in those three different modes. I keep thinking I've found a favorite mode. Um, I think the normal is my least favorite. I think that I love the jumps in tone in the modern and the classic. So up in normal mode. Sounds okay. That sounds nicer for palm muting. And that's more ACDC openness. Tune this guitar again. It's thick. It is thicker than oatmeal. It is only on halfway gain, so let's push that gain even more. Um, this is when the noise starts to kick in. It should be, there's a lot of gain. And this is when I'm going to play with the tone a bit more. Classic mode, I keep forgetting the names. The classic mode sounds great up there on the gain. The modern sounds great. The normal sounds a bit lackluster. So in my setup, the normal sounds okay, but the classic and the modern are really, really shining through. Let's push that. Gets very noisy. Um, and do something lead-like? I need to go and practice that. I'll be back in a second. practice I just played something that came to mind um that sounds great I don't think many pedals are designed to be turned 
all the way up with the gain. It does get super noisy, as it should, because it's adding a lot of gain. For the solo, mm, solo, for those, yeah, solo notes, it sounds still good to my ear in the room. Um, I think the strength of this pedal is the rhythm section. You might find that you watch a different video and they say something different. However, if you want something martially for 35 bucks, this is good. This is really good. Um, the marketing says it sounds amp uh, tube-like and stack-like. And I hate to say it, but I think they're kind of right. And they, it comes with a little card and it says, Shark is a wide range distortion with three different sound characters. True. From vintage to aggressive. Yeah. You get a lot of distortioned great definition. Uh, I don't think you get that much great definition. I think it lacks a little bit of top end because I've got the tone mainly up here. Again, that might differ with your pedals, but um, the note definition could be a little bit clearer. When you add in the gain, it does muddy up. It does compress a lot, which I actually really like. The, what else does it say? A lot of distortioned. It does have a lot of distortioned. I'll give it that. I don't think that it's a low gain strength pedal. It's certainly that um, JCM 800 sound that I'm I'm feeling. It, it's more it's more modern Marshall than it is classic Plexi. So although let's just let's stick it into which one's classic, that one, and put it low gain. Let's see if it does do uh, Plexi stuff. Why why aren't we working? Oh, we are working. It's just it's just low gain. <laughs> See, I'm losing, either I've lost my hearing or I'm losing that top end. Yeah, it's a lot of game. We're right the way doing that. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Put the guitar out of tune again, sorry. I'm pressing the strings really, really hard. It's not actually out of tune, it's just my playing, whoops. Um, okay, it does do that sort of lower gain plexi sound. <laughs> It does it, it's just my eyes say that the gain shouldn't be there. And that's wrong. So if I listen with my ears rather than my eyes, that's absolutely acceptable. I'm a fool. Okay, this does a lot of Marshall for a, a, a little bit of money. Just a little, a, little, a little handful of cash. Regarding the build quality, it seems absolutely fine. I mean, the knobs feel, they, they, it's a great, it's 35 bucks. It's 35 poundaged. So let's let's take a look inside. Hang on, turn that off. I just want to flex with my drill and let's take the screws off, take that out. Right. Oh, okay, well, I don't expect to see much. Hang on, where are we? There we are. But there's a pretty tidy job in there. I mean, it's, it's done by machine, so it should be. And then final assembly must be by hand, but we've got a little connector there. So it's all on a PCB, it all looks tidy. I don't think there's much to go wrong there. Where are we? There. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I was expecting because it's an SMD cheap pedal. You're not going to see much and there's no way that I'm taking that apart because there's no way I'm getting it back inside. So it's time for my roundup. So, the Shark from Sonic Cake. A wonderful, wonderful Marshall in a box. It is really, really quite surprising what you can get for $35 and whatever it is in your local currency. The difference between this and a more expensive pedal is that this has probably uh, higher tolerances for parts. So uh, the tone, I spent most of the time with the tone up around three quarters, over halfway, and yours might be somewhere with a wider range. We don't know that. The point is it sounds good on all three settings. There's something on every setting that I found that I liked. Um, it's there's, there's no issue with it. It's, I don't know about the the longevity of the build, but certainly using it in this video and using it in my own personal time, uh, I don't think I'm, I'm going to have an issue with that. Hmm, trying to think of some negatives. The negatives are, I guess, that it is a little noisy, but that's to be expected. 
the note clarity, yeah. I mean, if I'm being real picky, I'm going to say that you lose some note definition. But if you're looking for something cheap and you want to sound like I sounded in this video, I absolutely recommend it. There is, there's no reason not to. I guess the biggest negative is the fact that you can't really read what's going on on the pedal. So I had to, I had to memorize normal, classic, and I've got it around the wrong way, normal, modern, and classic. You, you kind of need to know that. So if I was at a gig, there's no way I could see what was written on there if I didn't know what was written. But also the sound differences, are, sound differences are so different that I can just experiment and hear, you can hear instantly that bump in, in the different tones. So you don't really need to know what they're called, I guess. What I'm trying to say is that for 35 bucks, you cannot go wrong. That is a steal. So well done Sonic Cake for whichever circuit you put in here. That, my geeky friends, is the end of the video, which means you've made it to the end of the video club. To prove that you are at the end of the video club and, and you can you know, show off to all your friends and, and buy the t-shirts if they were available, all you have to do is when you leave a comment telling me what you think of the shark, also include the phrase, we're gonna need a bigger boat. And that lets me know that you saw this sharky kind of pedal. See, yeah, okay, I'm old. A big thanks to Sonic Cake for sending me the pedal so that I can make this video for you. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, why the heck not go and do it? There's a button on screen, it's free. Also, while you're here, there's some videos just over there that you can check out. Go do that, they're fun. Okay, I'll see you sometime soon. Take care, bye-bye.